Jesus now is on his way to pay that price. So he comes now preaching, preaching, repent. What does it mean to repent? A teacher once asked a student, what does it mean to repent? The little girl held up a hand. I know, I know, teacher, what does it mean? She said it means to be sorry for your sin. Another little boy held up his hand and said, well, teacher, I know. It means that you are sorry enough to stop doing what you're doing. Amen. Yeah, just to be sorry is not enough. Amen. Uh, there are a lot of people today are sorry, but they are not sorry enough to stop doing what they're doing. I watched on the television a person who beat up his wife and he says, I'm sorry. Every time he beat up, he would say, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm sorry, honey, I'm sorry. But he would take another drink and another one and he would beat up again. And again, he would say, I'm sorry. But he was not sorry enough to stop beating up. Amen. That's the way it is with thousands and thousands of people out there in the world today. They are sorry, but they are not sorry enough to stop doing what they are doing. There are people out in the world today that are, are sorry, but they are not sorry. They are sorry perhaps that they got caught, but they are not sorry for what they are doing. We as God's people know, God's word tells us that we need to be sorry for what we are doing, but sorry repentance goes deeper than that. That we know and realize that what we are doing is wrong. That we are doing things that are wrong according to God's word. And there are people out there that until you know that what you are doing is wrong. There are millions of people in our world today feel that what they are doing is not wrong. Until they realize that what they are doing is wrong, then they will not repent. And the word repent means that we turn around, that we recognize that what we are doing is wrong, that we turn mm -hmm. from what we are doing and we go in the opposite direction. We turn around. How many people we know that think that what they are doing is right? Mm -hmm. And because of what they think and what they believe, they keep on doing the wrong things over and over and over again. So Jesus comes and he says that we are to repent. That we are to repent. And we find out in the Bible that there are those who in terms were sorry. We find that Judas was sorry, but he didn't repent. He was sorry. The Bible says he was sorry that he betrayed Jesus, but he didn't repent. We find that the rich ruler, he was sorry and he went away sorrowful, but he didn't repent because he thought that what he was doing was all right. Jesus comes saying, repent. In other words, we need to know that what we are doing is contrary to God's word. Yeah. Repent. Repent of our sin. And all the way that we need to know that what we are doing, then we must know God's word. What thus said the Lord. Thus said God's word. We need to meditate upon God's word. Not only just those Ten Commandments. And there are a lot of people that goes about the Ten Commandments. And we sometimes dress them up a little bit. We know, but we try to escape around them. We dress them up and say, well, it's just a little white lie. But still, it's contrary to God's word. Amen. Martin Luther said about it, says, what we do, we are even Christian. He says, the church and Christian people today, that they have brought God down on the level of man. That our God is too small. That we look at other people and we measure ourselves according to other people. Well, I'm not as bad as that person. But God's law still stands. So when Jesus come preaching repentance. And God's laws will always stand. 
No matter how we change and twist this world and how much men may accept it, God's laws will stand to the end of time. Jesus come re preaching, repent, and then believe. Believe, believe in the gospel. The gospel is the good news. We are to believe in the gospel. Believe in the gospel, and the gospel is the good news. It is about Jesus. Believe in Jesus. Believe that <coughs> Jesus have come. It's not just a pat on the hand that God is saying, it's all right what you're doing. No, no, no. God is not saying it's all right and wink an eye at the bad and evil things that we are doing. God law still stand and we hear it. God says the wages of sin is death. Someone must pay the penalty. God has not changed that yet and he will not. Someone must pay and Jesus, our blessed Savior, has paid the price. There is a price. There is a great price that needs to be paid for our sin, for our wrongdoing. And Jesus, our Savior, and that is the good news. That is the gospel, the price that we were not able to pay, the price that we could not pay. God, our Savior, paid it for us. Jesus, our brother, took our place, paid it for us. What we could not do, God did it for us. Jesus, that is the good news. Jesus comes saying, believe the gospel. Believe it. Believe that I paid that price for you. Believe that I suffered and died on Calvary Cross. Believe that I shed my precious blood for you. Amen. That is the good news. It is good news for us. It is good news for you. When we believe it, when we accept it, when we trust God that he took our place, that he took our place on that old rugged cross. Oh, what a price he paid. God paid for us. We are in this Lenten season. We remember the sacrifice that Jesus paid for us. The sacrifice that he made for you, that he made for us. Jesus come preaching, repent and believe. Amen. Believe. Yes, this is salvation for us. But we must believe in order to be saved. There's no way around it. No way. The Bible tells us as Paul was preaching, he says to them, believe on Jesus Christ and be saved. And there's no way that we will get into the kingdom of God unless we believe the gospel, that we believe in Jesus Christ. Yeah. So Jesus come preaching repentance. And there's no way for us to get there without repenting. We can't just waltz into the kingdom of God without repenting. We must repent of our sin and believe in Jesus Christ. That is the way of salvation. That is the plan of salvation that God has laid out for everyone. Repent and believe in Jesus Christ and you shall be saved. There's something else when we repent and we follow Jesus Christ. Then there's a change that is brought about. A lot of people say that, well, we can continue on in our old way. No, when we repent and believe in Jesus Christ, there's a wonderful change that is brought about. And that's the sad part about the age and Christians today that so many of us today that we say that I repent, that I believe in Jesus Christ, and we are doing the same old thing. Oh, my brothers and sisters, it is impossible for us to believe in Jesus Christ and continue to live the same old life. Yeah. To do the same old thing and act the same old way. 
We need to examine our lives and see if we are doing the same old thing. If we are still cursing our brother out and living the same old life and acting the same old way, then you may not be really living a child, a Christian life. Jesus says, take up your cross and follow me. The road is not going to be easy. Notice what he says to us in our reading today, our adversary, the devil. He is walking about like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. And the devil is seeking to devour. God tips no one. It is our evil flesh that draws us, our desires that drag us down, lead us down the road of destruction. But thanks be to God as we believe in him. It is the Holy Spirit that leads us through our baptism. Through our baptism we are drawn to walk the life that God has called us. To follow him bravely, daily, drowning the old Adam. So we are living that old life, doing the same old thing, telling someone a piece of our mind. Said some to someone, oh, you better be glad this old person then come. That old person need to be dead. Amen. Dead. Dead in Christ. That the new person arise, Jesus Christ, in us. Amen. So that we need to live the new life. There's an imperative that Jesus gives us. Is he called us? Three commands he called us that we repent and that we believe and that we follow him. Lord, where will you lead me? Will lead you bravely through trials and tribulation. I will lead you down the path to follow me and the road will not be easy. But come and follow me. My brothers and sisters during this Lenten season, I pray that you will draw closer to God so close that he will walk with you, that we will sing the psalm just the closer walk with me. Let it be, dear Jesus, let it be just the closer walk with me. Yes, and he will truly walk with us every step of the way so that Satan will have no power over us. Yes, Jesus will walk with us, that we will be able to sing the song, I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back, no turning back, though others may turn back, no turning back, I have decided to follow Jesus. And in the end, it's not you that have decided, but it's God. The Holy Spirit who is working in you day by day, renewing you and empowering you day by day to daily walk with Jesus. May he bless you day by day to walk with Jesus. Walk with Jesus. No turning back. <coughs> Repent. And it is a daily thing. For because we are human, because we are flesh, and because we are living in this evil world, it is a, it is a daily thing. Don't think that I repented once and that's enough. It's a daily thing that we need to repent every day. Martin Luther said, daily we drown the old Adam and the new man come forth. Every day. Every day we pray that Jesus will walk with us. During this Lenten season, let Jesus walk with you. Follow him. Follow him to the cross. Repent, believe, and follow. Amen. 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 May the power of the Holy Spirit daily renew you and refresh you that you walk with Jesus day by day. Amen. Amen.
Thank you, Pastor, for that word of encouragement.